A big part of the goal of this unit, because you have seen the most of this stuff before, is to really dig just a little deeper to give you a little more clear and more nuanced understanding of these things we call forces as well as friction in particular. And I hope through this example we can cover some of that. So the situation here is a little more interesting so I won't go to the free body diagram right away. I start with drawing a quick diagram of the situation first. So what we have is we have a truck. Uh, there's a box on the truck and then after some time the truck will accelerate constantly with a VO of 0 and we are looking for delta x at t equals 3 seconds or delta t equals 3 seconds. So because we're dealing with constant acceleration we can use our kinematics. But what does that have to do with this static friction here? How does static friction have to do with acceleration? Well here's the first thing you should remember. Static friction doesn't act when there's no movement per se. This is incomplete because the only thing static friction depends on is the state of the two surfaces that are touching. And static friction is in, in play when there's no movement between the two surfaces. The two things attached can be moving together. So that's a little refinement that we're aiming for here. Unlike what you might have been told or thought about before, friction doesn't necessarily stop motion. Right? All it cares about is, is stopping the movement between the two surfaces. So in this case, as the truck accelerates forward, the only thing keeping the box moving with the truck and not sliding backwards is the static friction itself. So in this case, static friction is the force that will drag the box forward with the truck. It's a couple ideas to clean up there. In this case, we're talking about the maximum distance know my kinematics. I know my delta x is equal to v o delta t plus one half a delta t squared. v o is zero. So if I want this to be maximum, I want my acceleration to be maximum. And we're talking about maximum again, these kind of limiting words. We don't want it to slide, so we can say that instead of using this less than or equal sign, we can again make it the equal sign because we're again at maximum static friction. The other thing is, in this case we have two separate bodies we're, we're interested in, so we should really be drawing two free body diagrams. And hopefully you're getting a little more comfortable with forces problem that we can now incorporate more than one bodies involved. The guideline is still true, for every single body you want to draw a separate free body diagram. And usually there's some kind of relationship between these two bodies that we're giving you about. In this case, what we're saying is the box doesn't slide on the truck. So what we know is that the acceleration of the box is equal to the acceleration of the truck. The two motions are stuck together. So that's something we can make use of. As we draw a free body diagram, there's another thing to notice is when you have two bodies in contact, that's when Newton's third law applies. And so you have these pairs of forces that are equal to one another in terms of magnitude and they'll also give us a little more insight. So the two bodies here, while not necessary, I just want to demonstrate how to draw these multiple free body diagrams here. You have the box touching the truck. So from the truck, the box will get a normal force, but because there are more than one surface, let's label them properly. So this is from the truck on the box, and then you also have a friction force. And we talked about how without friction, the box will slide backwards on the truck surface. So the friction is going to pull it forward. And in fact, that is the only force moving your box forward. On the other surface, by Newton's third law, then you know that you have some normal force from the box on the truck going the opposite direction, as well as the friction of the box on the truck going backwards opposite to that forward friction on the box. 
you have MPG uh, just to distinguish mass of the box versus mass of the truck and then the truck also touches the ground so it's gonna have some normal force on the truck from the ground and then some kind of friction force between the truck and the ground and I'm actually putting that forward because I know something about how tires on the truck work just to be complete by Newton's third law we know something about how these two free body diagrams are related they are equal and opposite action reaction forces on two separate free body diagrams in any case since we're wanting the acceleration of the truck but it's equal to the acceleration of the box we can basically solve the whole problem looking at just the box but I did like to include the discussion on relating different free body diagrams using Newton's third law in any case if we look at the sum of forces for the box it's equal to m box a box because we have multiple bodies involved it's good to use those subscript to keep things nice and clean there's only three forces on the box there and the acceleration as we know goes completely in the horizontal direction we can solve for the normal force using the j hat component and even though we don't know mb yet that's okay because it's likely going to cancel out and again we're at the limit maximum friction so we have that equal sign and if we follow this algebra through that's where the mass of the box cancels out so it didn't matter if we weren't given that anyway which is common in many of these problems we don't give you necessarily all the information so knowing how to manipulate these equations algebraically it's going to be helpful and to not be afraid when certain things aren't given to us because sometimes they do cancel out nicely and there we get our acceleration of the box which is the same as the acceleration of the truck then we can figure out using kinematics now that we have the acceleration of the truck over 3 seconds 10.6 meters so I know this problem might have been a little bit different I guess conceptually because it does address a couple of the more common misconception or sim oversimplification of thinking about friction so please do go over that and if you have any questions please let me know